Hello there, AGI 2014. I am Mario Skral of Celestial Intellect, and I'm going to present you a paper titled An Application of Stochastic Context Sensitive Grammar Induction to Transfer Learning. Here's the overview. I'm going to try to simplify it as much as possible. The Exa Machine Research Program was incepted in 2006. Giga Machine was done in 2009 and trained on a single core. The next version was Terra Machine in 2011 and trained on up to 300 cores. The present version is called Terra Machine Mark II and it scales even further. In the future, there will be more versions that are being planned right now. Terra Machine Mark II is an Alpha Phase 1 machine of Solomonov's Alpha architecture, which is an extremely powerful AI system. It can also be considered a parallel AGI kernel, which can be used to construct any kind of AI system. Terra Machine uses a scheme family reference machine, and it has scalable parallel induction algorithms on multiple parallel architectures. Its long-term memory representation is stochastic, context-sensitive grammar, together with fast update algorithms that make the system practical and effective. Um, let me introduce heuristic algorithmic memory concept. Induction programs invent heuristic solutions. The HAM system recalls these heuristic solutions as programs algorithmically. In this system, the guiding probability distribution of programs is memory. In our particular implementation, the stochastic grammar gives us the a priori probabilities. And fast update algorithms update the grammar. HAM accelerates the training sequence of problems. That is, say, it trains faster than when they are trained individually, separately. The system facilitates transfer learning across problems, which we can quantify. And we think it will replace, eventually, heuristic programmers in good old-fashioned AI research. The guiding probability distribution is based on stochastic context-sensitive grammar. And that's a usual CSG with a probability function over the productions. And those productions are is the same form as in CSG. We have a context uh, to the left and right, a prefix and suffix of a head non-terminal, which is expanded, preserving the context. And of course, we have a consistency rule so that the uh, probability axioms are going to be guaranteed. Our system works with any kind of induction problem, sequence set operator induction problems, reinforcement learning, pro program learning, grammar driven GP, basically any kind of general purpose AI. Um, where you have a solution that is a set of programs with a priori probabilities. For instance, in operator induction, uh, you maximize this expression, the summation of AJs, and um, you can see that AJ is defined as, um, on the left-hand side, there is the uh, a priori probability of OJ, uh, which is j probability model and on the right hand side you have this uh, product uh, that quantifies how well uh, the uh, probability model re reduces the uh, data set of uh, given 
question answer pairs. So let's formalize a little more. G0 is initial grammar. And um, we have a training sequence D uh, of M problems, capital M, and uh, HDI can be another problem. One could be a um, reinforcement learning problem, and the other could be a um, set induction problem. Um, what matters is that these differences are represented adequately in the uh, DI data structure, which can be pretty much anything. Um, and the uh, solutions are a sequence of SIs, and each solution SI is a set of programs, SIJ, because, well, in um, universal induction, each solution gives rise to multiple models. And um, this, this happens because um, some of the indu induction is basically a universal mixture. So uh, what we have here is uh, we have G0 and um, up to uh, Gn minus 1, the sequence of grammars. And uh, we use this information and, of course, together with the uh, data uh, to derive a new grammar Gn. That's the, basically the update problem. You, you can use uh, all the history, but uh, you have to come up with a uh, with a GN that represents the a priori probabilities better than GN minus one. The derivation lattice data structure in the paper is really a very simple generalization of usual derivation trees in language theory. Uh, well, instead of a simple tree, I'm using a bipartite directed, directed graph because well, I'm using different kinds of nodes for um, uh, for sentences uh, and productions. So, um, uh, what happens here is we are we are seeing that our body gets expanded into uh, a definition starting sequence by application of production rule R1 and the uh, more free structure of the derivation lattice allows us to represent the uh, conditional dependencies in the derivation of a context sensitive grammar. Update algorithm. Well, to execute the al update algorithm, we need a solution corpus. And um, this includes each solution, which is a set of programs, as previously mentioned, um, and the derivation layers for each program. So we have the uh, complete information for the derivation of that particular problem uh, program. And uh, we have a priori probabilities and formal parameters for each solution program. And uh, the update preserves the universality of grammar. So um, live and search will still be um, bias optimal. And history of grammars may be stored so that you can uh, make use of uh, all of them or backtrace and see where it went wrong. Updating production probabilities is the first update algorithm we're basically using Laplace's rule over solution corpus. So we have probabilities according to how many times each production occurs. Naturally, this will give us zero probabilities for many productions in the uh, initial problems. So, well, we need a solution for that and we are smoothing. We recommend two approaches. We can mix with probabilities in G0 or we can use exponential smoothing. Well, you can basically use any kind of, but um, of course, um, the kind of smoothing that you're performing will uh, will change the function of the uh, uh, memory here, and uh, you can bias it towards long-term or short-term memory uh, using different weights.
Memorization of solutions. Uh, this algorithm helps us recall precisely each solution. So this means that we don't really want to forget them. We want to remember as much as possible. So we make sure we do. And uh, we add an alternative production for each SIJ program. As you can see here, in a list-like language, you, um, you can just add, uh, add an alternative uh, head and using that head you can then factor into uh, the particular rules for each solution program and how do you calculate the probability that's easy you just weigh using a prior probabilities of the solutions derivation compression is a third algorithm this algorithm has common derivations to grammar and you see uh, most useful among these algorithms um, first we determine subderivations in the solution corpus with frequency greater than or equal to t and so what we're doing is we're mining the derivations which is why we use the derivation lattice we perform an enumeration algorithm on the derivation lattices and we detect these common derivations and when we find them we convert them to productions uh, so this process results in more productions and we calculate the probability of the uh, productions according to uh, how many times that derivation occurs in the solution corpus so that well there is this expression and uh, you're, fr you're free to improve upon it <laughs> Okay, uh, more on derivation compression. Well, what if it, t is too low? What if t equals 2 gives us a very large set? So then we start with t uh, equals to n uh, over 2, and uh, we subdivide it, we have it in each iteration uh, using goodness of fit test, and uh, we stop when goodness of fit. Uh, gets worse. So for goodness of fit we can use Solomonov set induction model. How do you, how do you do that? We um, extend the stochastic context-free grammar model of Solomonov to stochastic context-sensitive grammar. Uh, so well there are a few differences you need to use uh, uh, a bit more punctuation in the string representation of the uh, context-sensitive grammar. But it's basically the same thing and uh, so um, uh, we don't care about the probabilities here, just just the grammar, and uh, we use uh, this number k is the number of kinds of symbols, and ni is the number of occurrences of each kind, and we use two separators, separator one and separator two. Uh, the details are in the paper, but that's not too important. This uh, just a very simple model, and and then. We can use uh, the goodness of fit, which is the psi equals uh, PGGI, which is the uh, probability of the uh, grammar, a priori probability given by the uh, extended model in the previous slide. And, uh, and then you have on the right hand side how well uh, that, uh, that grammar works with the uh, with your solution pr program and uh, and we use uh, productions that improve the fit and improved models will be presented in the future so well to discuss uh, we basically extended oops while restoring bias optimality which means that um, well we use a more sophisticated probability model of programs then oops we could still handle it well and um, 
stochastic context sensitive grammar model for guiding PDF has been uh, introduced as a viable model and uh, we think it is quite fitting for general purpose PLs. It's quite comprehensive and uh, we have fast synergistic update algorithms. Obviously uh, the algorithms can interact with each other in uh, successive steps. They can update whatever the uh, previous the, the other algorithm did. And, um, and the status induction model was uh, quite important here. It allows us to decide which productions to keep and which productions to discard. Thanks for listening. Uh, well, please send your questions to examachine at gmail.com and um, I'll see you at AGI 2015 unless it is in Canada. And uh, thanks a lot.